As Methodist Healthcare Ministries celebrated its 25-year history, it recognized opportunities to deepen the impact of the work it's been doing across South Texas by sharpening its focus on health equity. Methodist Healthcare Ministry seeks to improve the health and well-being of both the people and places it serves. Health equity is the lens through which Methodist Healthcare Ministry seeks to reduce systemic barriers to health by supporting resilient individuals and families. This video series focuses on each of Methodist Healthcare Ministry's seven regions, sharing community voices whose stories shed light on the history of inequity in those regions and the people and partners who are making strides to change it by going on a journey from charity toward equity and building self-sustaining, thriving communities. What I love the most about the Bluff is we have everything. Flower Bluff ISD is fantastic. So the kids get, really get a great education. We have a retirement community. We have people from all walks of life. Um, we have a homeless population. We, it's a diverse group. There's a, a large area between those on the top and those on the bottom, but we can do things to improve. I, I'm, I'm telling you now, I could go right up here to some, uh, to some, a lot of our students, and I'm gonna drive to go to their home, and I'm gonna go past some million dollar homes but when I get to their homes, it's a dirt road and they're trailers and they look like places that I wouldn't want to live in. And so kids grow up in an environment. It's not that they, they can't survive in those. It's just that, you know, what we're setting it up and what we're saying to them a lot of times is we don't even value this place enough to put a, a road here. And, and we could. The city used to be its own and then they were annexed by Corpus Christi. And when that happened, according to my elders that I've spoken with, the dollars for the infrastructure started going away. We're in the 784 zip code. Uh, the beach is 784 zip code. A lot of the tax dollars that come in, the revenues that come in from vacationers, et cetera, seem to leap over Flower Bluff and go into the coffers there in Corpus Christi where they, they, they spend the money on their streets, et cetera. Maybe 20% of those people in the bluff struggling paycheck to paycheck. And for that individual or those families to try to get ahead, you know, they're worried about putting food on the table, not so much getting ahead. And it's uh, understandable. They gotta go to work, they gotta get the kids to school, they gotta pay their mortgage, their rent, their bills, everything. You know, a hurricane comes through, they gotta take care of that, family emergencies. The misconception is, is that they're, the, they're bringing in uh, People that just don't want to work, that want to live off the government, that's a big misconception. Uh, there are people out there that don't qualify uh, for affordable housing. They may be in a different tax bracket, but they need the help. You remember when we were in, in school and the kids, I mean, you know, your first, second grade, you, you know, I want to be a police, I want to be a fireman. But they were asking this kid, he was about 10 or 11 years old, and they were asking him, the, the guy said, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? And he was looking off in, you know, he was staring off into space, kind of. And then he said something I think was so profound. He, he said, I can't see it. I said, whoa. It all starts again back with education. Uh, if you have the education, you can strive to do anything that you want to do. And you can accomplish anything that you want to do. I always encourage students that I work with, families. It's good to have some skills. Uh, you know, in the area where we are, a big employer is the, the refineries. Uh, of course, the, the, the naval uh, station here employs a lot of folks. Uh, outside of that, a lot of the jobs are service jobs. So consequently, some of our students and some of our families as well, they take jobs that are service oriented, which, which not necessarily always uh, paying well. And a lot of folks consequently end up making those careers. They spend their lives doing that. The generational poverty that I see in the Flower Bluff community is um, high school students graduate high school and they get a job and then they get an apartment and they get stuck in a cycle of now I got to pay for rent and I'm working for $10 an hour and they can't get out of that 
trap. The fact of the matter is, some people are paying as much as fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars to rent. Fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars to rent. Think of what I just said to you. One thing that's missing in this particular Flower Bluff community, we are a long ways away from any shelters. We don't have any shelter for folks who have no home to be able to stay at night. We have several ministries uh, in the area that, uh, that are, are meeting some of the need, food banks. Uh, you know, we have a, a large homeless population out here, but there's facilities for people to get off of the street and get a, get a haircut, get a bath, get, get a meal. We serve meals five days a week, Monday through Friday. They're good, hot uh, meals. And to teach them that there's a better way to eat, like whole grains, et cetera. When we're up and running, we'll feed between 80 to 100 a day. Timmons Ministries is a day resource center that was established back in uh, 2000. One of our gold jewels is our medical department, where we see non-insured people. Dr. Blair is here Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and we'll see anybody without insurance. We also had a dental back in 2009, which has been very popular. I mean, there's some people that come in here and they've got a broken down picket fence of anything. Get that straightened out, get them teeth, and they can go get a job, and they'll come tell us. And that's, uh, that's a win. Most of our people who are working and come here work one or two, sometimes three jobs. They're just trying to keep everything put together, you know, keep a roof over the head, keep the kids fed and clothed. They just don't have insurance. And so they're working their butts off, but they come here because we will take them without insurance. I know there's a lot of resources there, but getting to them is tough. And one thing we've learned this past year, frustrating for those of us who are savvy with computers, or we think we are, there's nobody to talk to. You have to do everything online. You can't get a hold of anybody. It's difficult. And we know that was the way it had to be, but hopefully that's gonna loosen up. Because for many people, they need the face-to-face -to, -face to figure out how to do whatever they need to do. Like me, I'd prefer face-to-face -face. <laughs> instead of talking on the it's the inability of that uninsured population to access high quality health care. And sometimes it's as simple as just preventive measures, vaccines, um, preventative exams, maybe labs to make sure everything's going okay. At other times it's the inability to access um, health care when there's an acute problem. So somebody maybe they had a heart attack, but they stayed home because they don't have insurance coverage. They may come to me later with heart failure because they were not treated initially. And that's all, it's a rational decision that they make based on finances, but that's an inequity that, that if they had had insurance, they would have been treated appropriately. They would have felt fine going, calling the EMS, going to the hospital, receiving appropriate treatment. Some folks, are, are accessing the type of medical care that other people are, are, are sick and dying of, that it just seems that people are, are dying with things that are treatable or curable just because they don't have money and it just doesn't seem fair. I think the key to solving a whole lot of the problems that we have is the church. The folks who are part of their ministries are really the people who are making a difference. I mean, yeah, you, 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 you have some civic folks you have folks who are part of our city who want the problem solved, but I think a lot of it, and I think that's a big part of the commission of the church, you know, to go into the world, to help, to, 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 to take care of a lot of these problems. As a whole, I think the community uh, really kind of takes care of each other. So that's what I've always thought about Flower Bluff community, is it's a, it's a tight knit community. And, um, and so if folks are made aware, they are willing to help. We're trying to champion the city to build more um, low-income housing so that more families can have a better place to live. I've sat on some communities with the city, with the county, that are trying to work in ways to get people services and hopefully, you know, eliminate or get those, get those numbers down. My favorite type of office visit is they'll come in and they say, I just got my insurance, all I need is my whatever medication refilled until I can get to my first appointment. That is great. That is so cool because then they, then they don't need us anymore. And that's, that's great. It would be fabulous if I were just out of a job because nobody needed free health care. That would be the best.
I don't ever think we're going to be in a place where everybody's the same. That's, that's not the way things work out, meaning that everybody's going to have the same. But I think we have to at least meet the basics. Everybody should be able to eat, have health care, have education. And as a community, if we're not doing that, then we need to improve.